everybody. Welcome back to the garage. Actually, I guess it's not the garage anymore. This is my new, I guess my new fabrication or fabrication facility. Um, and so one of the things I thought I'd do, because I never found a great place to go look at it, is talk about some of the tools that I've been using, what I needed, um, and maybe get into some of the things like the sizing of some of the stuff and what I use and what I don't and what kind of came in the kits. So I, start, I figured I'd start here when we look at the fabrication side of it. So when we're prepping all of the parts, you know, I have the, uh, the drill. This is an air drill, works really well, spins very fast, uh, 3000 RPM, and uh, therefore it makes for really neat holes. I have the battery operated drill as well. I use that when it's something quick um, and it's not easy to get to with the air hose. So that works out well. Over here, this is a new piece I've added based on kind of where I am with the construction now. And that's uh, an angle drill. And the reason I got that is I couldn't get either one of these other drills down in some of the areas that I had to, um, to drill out. And uh, that works pretty good. Here, I added a nibbler. So this is an air nibbler. It's good for cutting out some holes, cutting some things out that you might need to cut around. Um, it works pretty good if you're careful with it, uh, but I really like it and uh, I use it uh, most of the time. Sometimes I will use these cutters, the, uh, the sheet metal cutters, but um, you know, the results vary. So it just depends on what you're doing. Right here, and I have a couple of these for doing the countersinking. You really want to have a few of the bits, the countersink bits. I've broken off two of them as I've been doing it especially when you get into the thicker aluminum. If you just tip it the wrong way, it'll, it'll snap. So, but it works, it works really well. And I really, I really enjoy that. Moving down here, <coughs> these, um, these are fluting pliers. There's some situations where as you're putting the aluminum together, especially if you're assembling it, you may need to do some fluting um, to get the pieces to line up. Uh, pretty easy to use over here. Once I've drilled some holes out, you know, this is to enlarge the holes and I have a number of different sizes here. Uh, I started off with the smaller one, but as you get into more and more of the pieces, especially as you get later in the stages, uh, you really need the, the larger units. Here I have some uh, Clico clamps. I use those a fair bit as well. I don't have a lot of those, but I use them enough to, uh, to be worthwhile. So I, 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 uh, I think they're a good add to the kit as well. Um, these are in the wrong place, but these are the gauges I use for uh, driving the rivets. You really want to have a good set of the gauges. You'll want to be checking that pretty regularly. Up here, Clicos. Doesn't matter what anybody tells you. You know, these ones uh, for the uh, 30s, um, you don't need a ton of those. I think that basket I've got there is actually pretty good. This here for the 40s, um, I, this is about half of what I have. You could get away with that, but then you're constantly having to take the Clicos out, put another ones in, or maybe you can't hit all the holes you'd like to do. So I, uh, I end up getting a lot of them and I use them quite a bit. Down here, this was a little cheap piece I got, but uh, it's great. You use a hacksaw with it and it allows you to cut some uh, angles, especially when you're chopping up some of the uh, aluminum uh, angle iron and you've got some uh, you know 45 degree cuts and stuff that you might need to do. It works really well. I also went out and purchased this. This is um, a drill bit set, but this is the size drill bit. So, you know, most of the kits that people have at home tend to be, you know, quarter inches, you know, the standard uh, sizing of the drills. But this is uh, the numbered bits, which is what you need when you're doing most of the work with the airplane. Here I have a T-square with an angle piece on it. Uh, I got this because uh, in certain cases I need to cut certain angles or measure certain angles and this works really well for that as well. Moving down, you're also going to need um, something to, to accurately measure. Um, I use this. This is actually pretty good. It works pretty good. I got it. It's a Husky and uh, I would say I probably use it uh, especially now as I get further along in the build. I use it a fair bit. This here, uh, again, for shaping the metal. So it allows you to, you know, to do some angles uh, to 
to get it nice and square, it works out. Clico pliers, I have two sets. Uh, these ones happen to be spring-loaded, which are pretty nice. Uh, so you don't have to open them, they'll pop open for you. And just makes it a little easier if you're working on your own. Moving up, so now that we've got all the drill, you know, the holes drilled and everything else, now we get into some of the deburring tools. So this one here for the straight edges, here for deburring the holes, I have two of those. I have this one here and uh, I actually have another one, uh, oh, right here. And this one's a little longer to get in where, you know, where you can't get in with that shorter one. Some punches, those are useful, again, for later um, when you mess up some rivets and certainly I messed up a lot of them. So uh, this allows you to kind of drill them out, pop them out and do it over again. This is a little punch, spring loaded. This is great for marking holes, so you can get a little mark there and then you can drill it. It makes it easier to drill later. And of course, you're gonna need some files and you're gonna need some scotch bright for sanding some of the stuff down, getting rid of the rough edges. Moving along, some clamps. I have various clamps. These are just some of the examples, but I also have, uh, you know, the wood clamps like these down here. I use those quite a bit. So you, you can never have too many clamps. So with all that done, um, that's most of the fabrication. One of the things I will show you here, if we walk over here for a minute, this is what else you'll need. Um, I use this. This is what I use to deburr the metal, uh, shape it if I've got some rounding to do. Uh, that's a Scotch wheel, a scotch Bright wheel. That works really well. You're obviously gonna need a drill press for drilling some of these holes. And over here, this was the piece that I couldn't get a good read on kind of what kind of blades people were using. So you'll need some kind of saw. I, I got the band saw. And for this one, what I use is the 18 uh, teeth per inch blades. And they seem to work really well with aluminum. You can't use it on, at least this blade, you can't use it on uh, steel. If you do, it'll just destroy the teeth on it. But I use this uh, a lot as well. So that may be something you want to think about if you haven't got it already. So moving back over here. So now we move on to assembling this and riveting it. So you'll need a rivet gun. This one has a swivel on it. It's okay. I don't know that I really need it. Um, you're going to need a, different, a bunch of different tips for it. Okay. This is a back rivet set. So this goes in conjunction with this plate. Um, I really like the back rivet sets. It makes it easy to drive the rivets in. You're going to need bucking bars. I have three of them. I'm only showing you two here, but this one with the foot on it, I've used a little bit. Um, this one here is a uh, titanium one, and uh, it's really heavy, and I really like that. That's really nice to use. And then this is for the flush rivets. Now, you'll notice what I've done here is I've gotten the rivet tape and I just put it over the end. And the reason I did that is I find with the flush rivets, if I do that, I don't have the marking on the skin like I was getting without it. It just seems to, uh, to work much better. And at least for me, just for some numbers, I tend to do my riveting at about 50 PSI. It seems to work really well. It gives me a lot of control. Um, I don't know, other people may do it at different, uh, different air pressures, but for 50 PSI, it works really well for me. I mentioned the back rib bar. This one here, you may be able to get away without it. It's a special bar you need for doing uh, um, some of the, uh, the trailing edges to get in there and to be able to rivet it. Moving down, all of my die sets for my rivet gun. Here's my rivet gun. This is for riveting, it's for dimpling. This gets a ton of use. Um, it gives me the most consistency. Obviously it's a squeezer, so it just squeezes it. It gives me the most consistency. Where possible, I use that. If I can't use that, my next bet would be if I could do a back rivet. And if I can't do that, then I'll go to the rivet gun and the bucking bar. Uh, but this thing is, is incredible and worth, well worth it. And then I have a second jaw for it to reach in a little bit different places. And then moving down, I have two of these uh, pole rivet guns. This one was fairly expensive. This one was pretty cheap. I can't remember where I got it, but uh, 
it was pretty cheap. And I'll tell you, I mean, this guy works the best for me. Um, so, you know, it's kind of up to you where you want to go with it, but that really does work the best for me. However, when I'm doing a ton of rivets, I use this thing. Uh, it's a pneumatic rivet gun. Uh, this thing does a fantastic job. You just fly through the rivets. I've recorded that in a couple of sessions that I've done. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you're laying down a lot of rivets, that's the thing to use when, it, when they're being pulled. Handy dandy uh, primer, aviation based primer, uh, just for those cases where you mess something up. Okay, continuing to move along, you'll need something like this. Um, maybe you could get away without it, I can't. But uh, what this is, is for doing your safety wiring. It does a really nice job with the twisting. I've got some pliers here as well um, as I move down. You'll also need this. Um, so that is a torque wrench. It's in inch ounces. I have another one in foot pounds, but you really need an inch ounce one for a lot of the bolts you're putting in. And then you'll need these uh, crow's, claw, uh, crow's feet uh, for some of the spots where you can't get in with a socket. You'll want to get some of these. These are combo wrenches and uh, they're ratchet style. This is, uh, this is important, especially you know, some of the spots you get to, you can't really get in there and take it off and put it back on. The ratcheting just makes it so much easier for some of the assembly. These are new add to my kit. They're hold, they will hold your washers for you as you try and get the bolts in. Sometimes it's very hard to get your, your hands down there, so they work really well. You'll also need, as you're starting to put some of the piping together, you're going to need some uh, gasket sealant. You're also going to want to have some of this. It's really just used for marking where you've torqued the bolts so you can actually see it in case they move. You'll need some anti-seize lubricant for some of the things. And then as we move down here, you'll see I have uh, two things. This guy here, if I can get back far enough, it's, uh, it's for doing pipe bends. I had pretty good success with it, I guess, but fundamentally, you know, I'm, I was not great at it. And then this here is for actually doing the, uh, the, the pipe ends, the uh, flange, and the flare for the pipe ends, and this worked really well. And then, of course, we've got the pipe cutter, another set of those, uh, those uh, combination wrenches that I mentioned earlier. Don't forget the safety glasses, and, of course, the air protection. Uh, when you're banging these rivets, it is pretty loud. You really do want to put something on for that. So that's kind of the major look at all of the tools. And then a couple other things I have. I haven't used it yet, but this is a hydraulic wire crimping tool. When I go to put in the battery cables and some of the cabling, this is really handy for that. I don't have, I have all of my, uh, my crimping tools and stuff. I just don't have them here with me. And then over here, we have a tap and die set. I've used it a few times. It comes in handy as well, but you're going to need it certainly when you're doing the uh, tail section and you want to put in the, the tie down, you're going to need to be able to tap out uh, the spot for the tie down bolt to go in there. And then this thing here is the tool I use for doing most of the dimpling of the skins. I made this platform. There's a number of different specs out there for it, but it's just a simple platform with a platform. This thing sits in between it and it allows you to just kind of pull this down, dimple it, move it to the next one, and away you go. And uh, you really do need something like this. There's a number of different options out there. You can get the one you hit with a hammer, but for me with the handle, it just made it so fast to go through that and uh, it covers off where you really can't get to with the squeezers that I showed you earlier. That's the majority of the things. There's obviously, you know, I've got a number of benches that I've built. There's a vise that you'll need, uh, some hammers. Uh, there's, there's definitely a number of other things that, you, that you'd have kind of around your house, uh, maybe as part of your garage kit as well. But uh, I just wanted to show you this give you this kind of view of it and let you know kind of what the tools are that I use. Oh, the one thing I didn't mention, I may as well mention here, uh, these things, those are, you put them on your drill bit, it's, it prevents you from going and drilling too deep. 
I've not used them actually. I have a number of those. They came in the kit I got and I really haven't had a need to use them. So uh, mixed reviews on those. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, uh, you know, just drop me a comment down below and I'd be more than happy to answer what I can. Like I said, this is what works for me. Uh, what works for other people may be a little different, but uh, at least you kind of get an overview of the tools I use and, uh, and frankly, what works and what doesn't. Enjoy. Thanks.